Hi, I'm Sam, and today we're talking about how to perfectly mix music and vocals. I'm gonna give you eight tips on how to really perfect that background music in your videos. It's hard to do. If it's too loud, you can't hear me like I'm doing now. Kind of, kind of too distracting because the music's so loud. And then in this case here, the music's so soft that it's it's impossible to uh, to pick it up, and it's almost distracting that you can't hear any music at all. So whether you have no music like now, or a good mix of music like you hear now, there's a great way to do it and there's definitely right and wrong things to do. So let's talk about it in just a couple minutes after the intro, which starts now. Okay, tip number one is to just use your ears. There's no hard and fast rules um, in lots of cases. It's all subjective, it's all up to your personal preferences. Some people like that background music to be a little bit louder, some like it a little bit softer, some like no background music at all, which is just fine. But obviously the best thing to do is just use your ears, use your common sense, and, and that's that. Tip number two is to don't use one source for your playback. Let's say you listen to it on your computer speakers with the volume maybe halfway up and it sounds great. Okay, that's good, but you still need to check it on some headphones, maybe you have some Beats or just some Apple AirPods or earphones. Whatever it is, maybe you export it and listen to it on your TV first, you gotta make sure that the playback sounds great at different levels. And so that can also include just turning the volume way up, way up, and making sure it sounds good and turning the volume all the way down, making sure it sounds good. Um, just don't use one source for playback before you export it to YouTube. Tip number three is vocals should normally peak between zero and negative six decibels. You wanna try and get it as close to zero as possible without it clipping, and that's really gonna provide the best sound quality for your vocals. It's gonna give it that nice, rich sound. People won't have to go in and turn the volume up and then get frustrated when there's loud parts and then soft parts, so general rule of thumb is to keep that vocal range between zero and negative six decibels. Tip number four is kind of similar. The music, um, again, this is not a hard and fast rule, but generally the music, you want that to be peaking around negative 20 decibels. Now that can change depending on what's going on. If you've got an intense scene and you want to bring up the excitement and bring up the audio, that's perfectly fine. But as a general rule of thumb, negative 20, negative 15, negative 25, Really depends on the track you're working with, but in general, you want to be at least in a negative 20 range for peaking. Now, number five is a huge one. Don't use ducking. If you don't know what it is, that's great. You probably don't do it. But if you do know what ducking is, or even if you don't, it's where one audio track is reduced by the presence of another. So what that means is if, you know, let's say you're watching a video and there's a voiceover that starts, and as soon as the voiceover starts, the audio um, bit comes down. That can be super distracting, especially if you go from audio only to voiceover back to audio. You'd hear that ducking quite a bit and it just sounds really weird, like someone's in there messing with the controls and it doesn't sound natural. So that's number five, don't use ducking. Tip number six, we're going to get into to a little bit more technical details now, six, seven, and eight. For tip number six, you, the idea is to create a pocket for the human voice to fill. So I'm not, you know, an audiophile. I don't know a lot about the human voice, but there is a range of, of hertz where the human voice fills. And so if you go into your audio track and you reduce or kind of create a pocket in that music, then your vocals will fill into that pocket nicely. And again, that's more detail than I want to get into. If you want more information on how to do a pocket, there's tons of tips, just Google how to create a pocket for my voice to fill, something like that, you'll find some resources there. Tip number seven is to drop the low end frequencies on the vocal track, maybe anything under 120 hertz. And again, I'm not a techie person, I don't know quite what that means, but you're, from my understanding, you're just kind of getting rid of, of these frequencies that are distracting and that take away from the voice. Now tip number eight is obviously just use the best microphone you can afford. Right now I just have a Rode VideoMic Pro. It's not the plus, it's not the brand new one. It's about 150 bucks on B&H Photo. And it works great for just talking head stuff like this. But what I really love is to have a nice five, $600 shotgun mic that sits right up here, right above me, just out of frame. And it can really make the audio more rich and make my voice really pop on the track. And so that's just kind of the last tip is to use the very best microphone you can afford. But anyways, all of these tips together, you should be able to create a nice mix between the background music and the vocals. And the more you push out videos, the more you create content, you'll get better at, at doing this and finding the perfect place, um, the perfect distance between the two. 
but there is something special to it. It's definitely distracting when the audio is too quiet and it's definitely annoying when the audio is too loud and you're having a hard time uh, listening to what the person's saying. So that's it. I hope you like this video. There'll be more like it. Please subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.